Hello once again YouTube and welcome back to The Domain. Halo Heroes Series 12. Now, <laughs> what do we make of these? This is another review with The Domain and today we are asking the very important question, should you buy Halo Heroes Series 12? Or more importantly in this review, does Halo Heroes Series 12 live up to the legacy of Series 11, Series 10 and everything that came before it? Because the number one thing that everybody has been saying is, yes, there are no named figures. Just some random army building soldiers. Which I don't particularly have a problem with, especially the position we are in right now. But some people have issues with it, so we're going to talk through it. Halo Heroes Series 12 dropped about a month or two ago and graced us with six brand new superposable action figures from the Mega Constructs Halo line. They are insanely detailed with so many paint applications, including dry brushing effects and very highly detailed weapons. Some of them have accessories, even swappable heads. There's some real fun to be had here. First of all, we'll go into detail with the Covenant figures. We have an Elite Ultra and a Brute Warrior. Now these two, yes, they are fantastic for army building. I don't know if I've ever seen a cooler brute for pure army building purposes, especially giving us the standard soldier. And that can kind of be where the Elite Ultra misses out, because Elite Ultras are not standard warriors, and to be honest, I don't feel like you can army build too many of them, because if so many are on the battlefield, it looks a little out of place. But in saying that, they are great for army building, and they come with so many paint applications. We'll go into further individual figure detail in a minute, but we'll finish this overview of the figures. The other main army building soldier we have is, of course, the Marine Sniper. This one, again, I don't know how many snipers I want on my diorama, but that's kind of against the point. It is still a beautifully detailed figure, especially the camo tracking. And really, this figure is all about Mega Construct showing off their progress with the Call of Duty line, because this is a Call of Duty figure. It has the height and scale of a Call of Duty figure and a load of the pretty much identical details, even down to a flashbang, which I'm sure is not in Halo Infinite but they wanted to show off all of their interesting pieces and sort of merge the two franchises. And then we've got three Spartans, all have, well, actually, I was gonna say all have different pros and cons. Two of them, well, certainly this one basically has no cons. This is probably one of the nicest, if not, dare I say, the nicest figure that Mega Constructs has ever made. It is outrageously gorgeous and really, in my opinion, the center stage of this Mega Constructs line, the best figure in 2020 for sure. And then we've got these two figures. They are very nice and they have got a lot of detailing. The recon has a lot of dry brushing, which we'll go into details about why I don't think that works too well. But then the Mark VII is amazing. I think the choice of colors is awesome with the red popping out from his helmet and his single arm. All in all, a very nice range of figures. I mean, six very highly detailed figures that I think do belong in Halo Heroes. It would have been nice to see a Halo Heroes Master Chief in this line, or even like one of the popular Brutes, maybe even an Atriox, but I mean, they've not confirmed if he's in Halo Infinite, but still some kind of named figure. But I know they wanted to put the very nice Master Chief in the Brute Warrior 2-pack. So we're going to first go over these six in detail, and then we're gonna compare them to some old series. Let's go. Six figures today. We're gonna start from left to right. First of all, we've got my baby, my big boy Craig. <laughs> the memes flow through him. He's a meme machine. This Brute Warrior is fantastic. Comes with this brand new sort of plasma rifle thing. We don't really know what it is yet. Maybe it arcs lightning, but the figure itself, I mean, my goodness. He's got a really nice sort of pale skin tone to his body and it shows really where the armor runs. He's clearly wearing full body armor, like a full body jumpsuit, because all of this is a different color. So it really gives depth to the figure. Then he's got a removable helmet where you can't see my baby boy, there he is. The helmet being removable is a really nice feature, though they do lose points for having these holes in the head. I, I really don't like them. Then we've got these small red popping pieces all over the armor, really accentuates the build. His shoulders are very bulky. And really one of the interesting things about this brute is we have got this brute as well in the skiff intercept, 
But this figure only comes with one shoulder piece and one leg piece. So clearly, I mean, that's kind of the banished look, you know, they're, they're mercenaries, they're scavengers. But you do get all of the armor pieces with this one. And really, the color scheme is one of my favorites that I've seen in Halo Heroes. In Halo Mega Bloks, really, I mean, the colors are awesome. I love this popping red that is so akin to the banished. I give this figure a solid 10 out of 10. Another Covenant figure now, also a very nice one, is the Elite Ultra. This plasma repeater is such a gorgeous weapon, has some really nice printed detailing on it, and it really just screams, it sort of runs home that Reach design. And this Elite, yeah, he looks like he's straight out of Halo Reach 2. A little bit of an ugly boy, his neck is really long, but his armor, I mean, look at all of these sort of dark gray highlights all around. They wrap around him really nicely. His skin, again, is a different tone on his neck to the rest of his body, like he's wearing a full jumpsuit, full piece of armor. And you can, again, see the price difference. You pay more, but you get more for your value. I mean, this is an expensive figure, but this is the Elite that comes with the Banshee and has none of the printed detailing. Still a really cool color, and I like these blue eyepieces, but yeah, this one is clearly the king. Very nice Elite. I want to see more opportunities to army build the new Elite Mercenaries, but I'm sure that time will come. Then we've got the Marine Sniper with, for some reason, Romeo's helmet. I don't know why. And, you know, at first I looked at this and I thought, well, why are they not just releasing a nicely detailed Marine? While that would still be cool, they have other plans for the Marines. They're putting them in all the sets. That Marine Platoon Pack, you basically have more Marines than you could ever need with a couple of those. So it is nice, I guess, that they give a very specific figure, a Marine Sniper, to add to your army. The camo printing underneath, I mean, my goodness me. It is Call of Duty and they've got so many of these like Call of Duty accessories, especially like these leg straps with a tack pad and a Call of Duty backpack. But you know what? I don't mind. I used to kit out my Halo figures with Call of Duty parts all the time. So it doesn't bother me and there are just an outrageous amount of paint applications, even like a thin layer of light gray that goes underneath his visor. He's got, yeah, I mean, this is a fantastic figure. Comes with a very detailed sniper rifle. I know everybody always loves to get really detailed sniper rifles. This is an excellent figure and a really cool start to army building your Marines. Very nice indeed. Moving on to number four, we've got the Spartan Recon. Now, I do have a lot of things to say about this. First of all, you know that I am in love with Spartan Recon and this brand new design. The design is flawless. I mean, I love this Halo Reach style infinite recon. I think it's really, really cool. And the assault rifle is also fantastic. Very sleek, very stylized, three colors, really nice. And I will compare the Spartan Recon to the one we got in Banshee Breakout because they are very similar, but also a little bit different. Now, Spartan Recon and Banshee Breakout, this excels as a figure because it has a really beautiful four-piece color scheme that just really makes it pop and stand out really nicely. And it has this reach accessory kind of backpack to it. Now, th there's nothing wrong with this one and they've tried something new. They've added dry brushing to the ends of each of the limbs. And while it is cool on paper, when you actually see the design, it makes the orange look a little strange because only these four pieces have sort of this dry brushing effect. It, it makes the figure look a little, um, a little misplaced. This one, I mean, this just, it just looks like it was born on the battlefield. This one, no real soldier would pick this color scheme. It is so strange. Only a kid that plays Fortnite every day would choose an orange and blue with this weird sort of dry brushing. It's not that I'm complaining about this figure necessarily, because it is really nice, but I think that this is so much more Halo-esque. This feels more Halo than this one does. It still has some nice detailing, especially these gray pouches here, which even have two different color applications to them, both like dark and light gray. He has a really nice colored silver visor. It is a very nice recon, but I would have chosen definitely different colors and maybe tried to dry brush the whole figure at once. Number five is the Spartan Mark Seven. This one, everybody lost their minds at first. No, Noble Six is not alive in a cave. This is not Noble Six, but I do love the potential for the lore 
of this being Spartan Mark VII armor. Jonathan at the Domain really likes to suggest that the new book where the Master Chief and Blue Team go back to Reach, they're going to find old armor and repurpose it with Halsey's help to make the new Spartan Mark VII to fight the Banished. Or it should be fight the created, but I guess Cortana's just been forgotten about, even though she's more dangerous than the Halos themselves, I, I don't know. But these, you know, I'm really excited to see what they do with the Mark 7s. It comes with this fantastic bulldog shotgun, which even though it doesn't look amazing in the game, it looks awesome in figure form. Then it's a very, yeah, very stylized sort of dark grey mixed with black. And then this red is made to pop. I don't actually, I've not seen many people joke about C-3PO yet. But I, I'm getting some C-3PO Force Awakens vibes from this one. I do love the scheme of it. No, I don't think it's Noble Six. But I do think it's going to have some amazing lore implications in Halo Infinite. Then I've saved the best till last. The granddaddy. I think one of, if not the nicest Mega Constructs figure they could have ever made. And I think a lot of people agree with me. It's this Spartan Gungnir. Where do you even begin with this thing? The design alone, this Gungnir helmet straight out of reach. Forget the 343 era Gungnir, I hate that stuff. This one is so epic. It comes with a robotic arm, which again screams Halo Reach customization options. It's got an awesome knife on its side, a really nice mangler weapon with some painted highlights inside the barrel. It's got so many paint applications I can't even count. All of the detailing on these ammo rounds on its chest. It's got this white emblem on its shoulder. It's got so much to offer. And it works perfectly in a team with the Spartan Recon and the Spartan Mark VII from the Skiff. In fact, this one should be compared more to this one. But I mean, I, I like them both for very different reasons. But these make an awesome fire team. Halo is metallic green. It's what I think best represents Halo. And this one just nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. One, two, three, four, five, six figures. We didn't even mention the Marine Sniper's head as well. It's a pretty nice female mold. I don't mind that at all. But six figures. This is not Halo Heroes. What, <laughs> what happened? Uh, the recon. It got switched out. Another Craig tried to sneak its way in. This is not Craig Heroes, okay? Though there is a Craig. This is a really beautiful set of six superposable, very detailed action figures. And, you know, even though Series 10 did spoilers, I think if somebody had seen these figures, even back in the Mega Blocks days, they would have been absolutely blown away by the level of detail. Very impressed indeed. The next thing we're going to do is what I like to call the Craig Show. <laughs> we're going to pop all of these heads off. Uh, we need like a theme song for this. We're going to pop all the heads off and we're going to see what they would look like as a bunch of Craigs. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Oh, Simon, what are you doing? Why would you embrace the meme like this? Ugh. That's so good. One of them is already Craig. It doesn't need a Craig head. There we go. Six Craigs. Halo Hero Series Craig. This is truly cursed. This might be the most cursed image yet. Halo Heroes Series Craig. Ugh. Oh no, I'm going to hell. Oh man. Okay, we're going to compare these now to Halo Heroes Series 10 and 11. Let's go. Halo Heroes Series 12. <laughs> the Craig Heroes. The heroes of the Craig. Okay, so, you know, we're answering today, should you buy these? But also, are they living up to the legacy of Halo Heroes? And one of the most interesting ways of doing that is comparing them to Series 10 and 11. Now, Series 10, okay, it is impossible to really live up to the sheer legacy of Halo Heroes Series 10. I mean, it was Series 10 for a reason, the 10th anniversary, of Mega Constructs, and for that reason, I mean, the lineup is absolutely outrageous. The Didact, Noble Six, Arbiter, Rookie, Cortana, The Prophet, Cat, Yap Yap, Master Chief, even Tartarus. I mean, this is a legendary set, and really one that you, you could struggle to compare to, but at, at the same time, you kind of can. If we take something like the Arbiter, for example, this Arbiter was a legendary figure at the time, 
but really not many paint applications, really at all, if you compare it to this Elite Ultra. I really, okay, okay, I'm gonna get rid of the Craigheads. So you compare these two Elites. Now, of course, the Arbiter comes with some paint applications, but barely any. Compared to the Elite Ultra, this one is clearly a better designed and more well-rounded off figure with an outrageous amount of paint applications. So when it comes to that, Mega Constructs is always innovating and Halo Hero Series 12 definitely has the most paint apps ever in a series. So with that in mind, yes, they do live up to the legacy. The ones I've got in front of us here are Series 10, 11, and 12. Unfortunately, Mega Constructs made the decision to limit the base plates. The base plates used to be an incredible piece, but now they are just one single brick. Which for the gold 10th anniversary, I did understand, but now we're looking at ones that like, these displays do not look like they are, you know, anything important. They look like glorified blind bags when they have these displays. Compared to the lineup of Halo Hero Series 11, I mean, Halo Hero Series 11, we got the Arbiter, we got a Remnant Hunter, the Master Chief, and Lang ODST. I mean, most people weren't that fussed about Lang, but the Remnant Hunter and the Master Chief and the Arbiter, definitely very appreciated. But, it was only three named figures. I never cared for that Spartan Operator. The CQC was a fan favorite, but to be honest, when we're looking at Halo Infinite, Obviously, Mega Constructs can't be spoiling anything with new named figures. At the same time, I would have had a centerpiece Master Chief, a really highly detailed one, or I would have had the Pelican Pilot as the main of the six, because the Pelican Pilot, I know they want you to buy the Pelican, but I think you'd buy the Pelican anyway. I think it would have definitely been beneficial for them if they'd included the Pelican Pilot, or at least one named figure to round off the set because it did feel like it wasn't an official Halo Heroes, but at the same time, some absolutely fantastic figures. Okay, friends, today we set out to answer, should you buy Halo Heroes Series 12? My answer is absolutely yes. The benefit of this is you don't have to buy them all if you don't like. If I wasn't into collecting, I might give the Spartan Recon a miss, but the other ones are absolutely fantastic figures and ones that you really should get into your arsenal to prepare for Halo Infinite. The Kraig, the Brute Warrior, is the greatest army building figure that we've had in Halo Heroes and the Gungnir might be the nicest figure I've ever seen in Mega Constructs. So it is definitely a strong series, one that you should go out and buy before Halo Heroes Series 13 comes along, which I don't think will be long since we already have the new blind bags announced. So yeah, this was another video with the domain. There is one day left, only one day left, to win two Elite Ultras from Halo Heroes Series 12. All you need to do is make your way to the Mega Constructs Domain Facebook page, like the page, and then you'll see the pinned video on the page is how you can win these. And also, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to join my community. Join the epic team behind the domain. We are expanding more and more every day, and you guys are so welcome. Head over to my Discord to chat to me more, and the Elite Ultras are signing off. What 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 Ooh, even the arbiter he's warting as well he didn't want to miss out on a good wart what what what